Thursday, February 20th, my baby boy's birthday today. Uh, and we have kind of a full agenda today, and I'll just jump, jump right into it. Um, a reminder that uh, next Thursday, February 26th at 9.30, we'll have our weekly webinar, uh, PPACA webinar. Um, also, as we move further or closer, I should say, to the cutoff date of 331, um, we are going to start really talking in our weekly webinars about strategies and also, um, you know, how what what qualifies as a special election period and really what you need to do to target um, those clients outside of the initial annual enrollment of the FFM. Um, as we do talk more strategy, we're going to um, possibly limit who actually can participate in our weekly webinars because obviously, um, you know, we are a general agency. There are many friendly competitors that we do have in the state, um, but we're certainly going to um, talk strategies so that it benefits not only you, but also URL. So our agent partners are really going to um, benefit from it. Um, and hopefully, if you're not one of our current agent partners, you'll consider getting licensed so that you can participate when we do talk more strategy, sales strategy. So without further ado, uh, we'll start with our first bullet point, uh, the FFM, FFM enrollment. Um, as, as many of us know, Saturday was the close for 3-1 effective dates. Uh, HHS had scheduled updates at 3 p.m. on Saturday, but it appears that the site went down possibly Friday or earlier on Saturday. So if you do have somebody that uh, did want to enroll and they weren't able to do so, there is a hardship exemption form and it is on our site, so I would, and I'll show you where that is in, a, in our next bullet point, but I would encourage you to have your client complete that form if indeed they did experience a hardship and weren't able to make application for 3-1. They did, with some of the updates, add some decent features. I'll have to be fair, and some of the features that they did add were um, questions relative to group affordability that was missing from the initial, one of the initial rollout. So um, if and when you do enroll somebody through the FFM, you're going to see some of those questions if you answer yes, that employer coverage is available. It's going to kind of dig deeper into the affordability factor. I consider that a plus. Um, there's also information uh, and questions relative to a special election period, you know, again, 331 is the cutoff. So after 331, they would have to have a qualifying event, special election period, in order to make application through the FFM. Uh, so some questions were asked um, or added to the site relative to the special election period. And if any of you are planning on enrolling people through the FFM, um, Give me a call if you would be willing to have me do like a three-way webinar so that I can view some of the other updates. It's very important for me to, to really see what's going on, see some of the changes, and unfortunately, the only way I can really do that is to witness it live. Obviously, we all, all know that you can't get in there and play around with an application without creating a unique account, etc. So if any of you would be willing to have me do that, um, I would be very grateful if you would give me a call and set up a time and we'll do uh, the enrollment together. I can either assist you heavily with that enrollment or just be a silent watcher, <laughs> a voyeur, if you will. Um, so just you know, give me a call. Um, right now, as of 2.16, February 16th, we are working on 4-1 effective dates. The cutoff for 4-1 is March 15th. So just be mindful of those times. That applies at this point to both on and off exchange. And um, you know, after 315, 
we have two short weeks from 316 to 331 to have all of the people that are currently uninsured or want to actually complete enrollment come out of the woodwork. So we're anticipating some busy, busy traffic times uh, from March 16th through March 31st. Just please know we're here to help you um, with any of your questions or any of your issues. So just uh, either contact me or your case manager and, you know, again, we're willing to help you and, and certainly able to help you. Our next bullet point uh, refers to the federally facilitated marketplace form. We did create um, on our website under health plan options and under product information a new section called federally facilitated marketplace forms. On, these, on this uh, site you're going to see a one page guide to the FFM, the actual quoting tool from healthcare.gov. If you're interested in the paper applications, single and family, the household size and income guidelines, the, the subsidy calculator, um, the actual website for the FFM, um, just added is the Medicator and CHIP enrollment site, which is the PA Compass site, and also um, the current Medicaid and CHIP federal uh, uh, um, FPL, uh, federal poverty level percentage chart. One thing that is going to be added is the hardship exemption form. That's going to be on there as of today. So again, if you had somebody that had difficulty in getting a 3-1 effective date due to issues with the site, visit our website or, or shoot me an email and I, I'd be happy to get you that form. The next item of discussion is um, the merger of Highmark Blue Shield and Blue Cross of Northeastern Pennsylvania. This was announced on Tuesday. Um, it was really no surprise to anyone earlier or actually late last year, um, NEPA and Highmark both released a statement that they had signed a letter of intent to work mo more closely together. Um, and now they actually are merging. I don't know what the time frame for that merger will be, but um, I do think that there are some positives in this. Um, some of the positives are that the BC NEPA's local operations um, obviously are going to be merged with Highmark. The merger details contain provisions to preserve NEPA's historical presence and operations and significant workforce in the northeastern and north central part of Pennsylvania. The statement includes that Highmark will maintain regional operations in the NEPA area and again make all efforts to maintain local staffing levels and they're going to create an advisory board so that the, the needs, the specific needs of Northeastern PA citizens are going to be addressed and not just uh, kind of do a blanket overall state approach. So, um, you know, again, I think there are some positives in this. Uh, we've been licensed with Blue Cross of Northeastern PA for many years, um, have done very well with the help of many, many, many of our partners and, um, and also at for Highmark, we are of not only the elite agency program, but we are on the elite agency advisory council board. Um, so I, I do think that if you're with URL for Blue Cross of Northeastern PA as well as Highmark, um, that the transition is going to be relatively easy for all of you. But either way, I think uh, working with URL, you're going to be in a good position um, because we provide services uh, and strong support for both carriers. There was um, a recent article onto our next bullet point about the forgotten penalties um, on the excise taxes that could devastate employers. And this article is going to be included under the uh, worth reading section of my Healthcare Reform Essentials newsletter this week. I do think that it's worth looking at because regardless of the group size, there is a $100 per affected individual per day excise tax that could be imposed upon employers that are not compliant. And basically what it says 
um, is that that under Section 4980D of the IRS Code, and any employer-sponsored group plan has to comply with an array of specified coverage mandates, and um, you know the the fine could be assessed if employer-sponsored coverage is offered, and that all of these provisions are not met. So you know where it, also the article goes on to say that the government doesn't appear to have undertaken any enforcement yet. It is a law in place, and it could be um, assessed on on groups. And it gives a, a really vivid example of you know what Hobby Lobby may be experiencing. If you recall, Hobby Lobby um, was was totally against the uh, contraceptive mandate, so that was taken out of their health plan. So not having that provision could actually have this company assess a, a significant fine. You know, again, enforcement is not really happening, but again, who knows when enforcement will or, or may or will happen. Um, word, word to everyone, you know, the government is looking for, <laughs> for money any way they can, so it's not un, unlikely that eventually these excise taxes will be uh, administered. On to the next bullet point, which is our cutoff dates and penalties. Um, you know, we, we went through a little bit about the cutoff dates. For 4-1 effective dates, application uh, must be made by March 15th, so just be mindful of those cutoff dates. And the penalties, last week and a couple, the couple of the previous weeks, we've talked about the individual tax and what that really means. And again, the law says that if, an insur if a person is not insured for a period of less than 90 days, no penalty will be assessed. With a little bit more digging, there is some information actually on healthcare.gov that basically says if application is made by 331 for a 5-1 effective date, that no individual tax would be assessed for all prior months. I have messages into uh, NAHU um, to see if we can get some final determination at this point. Um, you know, I guess we have to. We have a strong case that we could go by healthcare.gov if anybody has assessed that penalty. Um, but I, again, am trying to get a definitive for all of you so that, that we know what we're up against with your clients. And we're also still waiting for clarification um, with some of the employer mandate changes that were just announced last week. There was information on 50 to 99 employees and 100 plus employees, but the terminology employee, we're not sure if that means full-time equivalent or average number of total employees. So again, still waiting on clarification for this, um, and as soon as I have anything, I will let you know. At this point, if you're on the cusp um, with a group, we're going to have to assume that it means, um, you know, obviously one or the other, but we're going to have to assume that it, it truly means average number of total employees um, so that we err on the side of, of being more conservative as opposed to um, possibly being incorrect and in assessing penalties. So that is it for the program today. Um, there was only one submitted question, and uh, we're going to have our open forum right after this question. So again, if you have questions, you can either raise your hand by little clicking on the little hand icon uh, to the to the right of your screen, or you can type in your question. And the question that I have today is actually pretty timely, and it says, can I put a link on my website for the exchange? And quite frankly, you can. Um, if you look at our FFM page, you'll see that there is a link specific to the site. So you can put this hyperlink for healthcare.gov on your website. However, it's not, it's not going to be agent-specific. An agent-specific site 
is only going to be available through a web broker type contract. And again, URL has filed and been approved as a web broker for Pennsylvania, um, but again, we're all tied up with the testing of the site. Um, so we expect, hopefully, to have that up and running mid to late April. Um, and obviously, once it's up and running, um, you will not miss the announcement. <laughs> so don't worry about that. And with the web broker uh, arrangement, you would be able to not only offer your, your clients a, an off-exchange enrollment opportunity and quoting opportunity, but an on FFM enrollment um, opportunity as well with agent-specific information. So um, we're excited that we're going to have it, but uh, not have it. we don't have it yet. Um, one note I forgot to mention, on our Geisinger page under, under our health, uh, health plan options and product information, if you go into Geisinger, um, Geisinger Choice, you'll see that the individual marketplace broker of record letter was just released. So that is available on our site. If you have any clients with Geisinger that you've assisted and are not currently the agent of record because of the agent information being pulled out from that in the 834 reporting uh, to Geisinger, then you can use this form. Highmark's form has still not been released. I know everybody's really anxious for that as well. But just noting that the Geisinger form is now available. So let's go right into the questions that uh, were asked. We don't have a whole lot. Um, Britt says, do agents have access yet to view prospective prospect applications remotely as they complete them to assist? And I'm not sure exactly what that means, Britt. We can talk maybe more offline, or you can type in clarification. But if you're asking about a a computer-to-computer -computer remote uh, program, such as a one-on-one -on -one webinar. Um, we all have the ability to do that. It's, real, it's outside of the FFM. It's just um, it, it's done through a program. We have GoToMeeting. I know there's JoinMe that is a free service, so there are various services out there. Um, but again, let's talk offline if that's not what you meant. Margie is typing, oh. And Britt clarified, we are supposed to see what they see when applying with the FFM. Right. And you, you can see what they're seeing. You log in with their information or if you use a, a screen sharing. But there's nothing that I'm aware of that when they're enrolling, you would have the ability to kind of see exactly what they're doing without one of these programs. Um, Margie asked, uh, the last day to submit app for off exchange plan for open enrollment would be prior to 4:15 for a 5-1 effective date. And no, Margie, um, the the close on and off marketplace is 3:31 unless there is a special election or a qualifying event. So 3:31, you're going to get a 5-1 effective date. As of 4-1. Your client would have to have a qualifying event in order to make application both on or off exchange. Joe asked if NEPA has a BOR form, and they do not at this point. Um, if you have written any NEPA cases, Joe, that you're, you are not getting paid on, um, let me know, and we'll certainly try to correct that directly with NEPA and um, possibly use uh, the template that I have have made. And Tracy asks the very important question, will commissions be affected with the merger of Highmark and NEPA? And at this point, um, the Blue Cross of Northeastern commissions are set for 2014. I don't anticipate that that's going to change for this year, but I do expect that there will probably be some changes for the 2015 year, not only to 
Blue Cross of Northeastern PA group programs, but also individual. I don't know what those changes are, but and I've not heard definitively, but that's kind of what I anticipate. And let's see. It looks like those are the only questions we've had submitted, so if you want to do, uh, I'll do a last call for questions, and if you have any additional ones, go ahead and type them in. And if not, I'll just remind you that again, um, Thursday of next week at 9.30, we'll have our weekly PPACA webinar, and again, as we get closer to the close of the marketplace and enrollment, um, we're going to we're going to start talking more strategy, and hopefully you'll find it helpful. As always, I appreciate your participation, taking time out of your busy schedules to participate, and um, and thank you for your support and your partnership. Uh, have a great day and a great weekend. Bye bye.